Hi guys! Welcome to a reading vlog in which I read The Shadow of the Gods and the Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn, otherwise known as the Bloodsworn Saga. Bloodsworn Trilogy? The Bloodsworn? <laughs> Something. <laughs> so I'm actually coming at you from the future, not your future, but the rest of this video was filmed in May and it is now June 11th. I read these in pretty quick succession in May but at the end of The Hunger of the Gods I actually got sick with COVID and that really prolonged the editing process for this video. I just did not have the energy. I had also forgotten to film an intro and so I needed to go back and do that and I just was not feeling well enough until recently. So sorry for the delay on that. I have already posted my monthly wrap up in which I sort of discuss these a little bit but the rest or this vlog will kind of go a little bit deeper into my thoughts. I don't think I get too spoilery. I do try to keep it pretty like close to what is on the sort of summaries for these books, but we'll see. I might be totally wrong and completely misremembering that because of brain fog, but yeah. So stick around if you are interested in hearing more of my thoughts on these two very popular books by John Wynne. And uh, yeah, Lexi from the past will be what you see next. <laughs> comically bad at updating this vlog. I haven't even filmed the intro yet. That's coming later because like I was just not in a place to be filming an intro when I started reading this book. Anyways, Shadow of the Gods. Let me, let me get my book. Shadow of the Gods. I am, uh, Goodreads tells me 40-ish percent of the way through. I am on chapter, I want to say 24. 24. Bet to, bet to switch back to Orca, who is... Everyone was right. Orca is that bitch. I would die for her. I want to help her on her quest. I'm feeling a little manic right now. Let me back up. So, Shadow of the Gods. I'm pretty sure this is my first sit down update with you all. As I said, I'm about 40% of the way through this and it's been a little slow so far, the pacing. Not in like a bad way. Hello, Rocket. Um, Just in like a getting to know the world sort of way. It's kind of just dropped you right in the middle of this world. Big grid. Big grid. Yeah. So, um, all of our characters are, are up here and then this is sort of like a mysterious place. I'm gonna kind of Game of Thrones vibes though. So we have three different point of views so far. There are all these different people kind of like living their lives and their storylines are very disconnected from one another, at least so far. We have two people who are part of these war bands. One of them just joining was formerly a thrall or a slave and 
the other is in a different war band and she's been in, in it for a while and she's like climbing the ranks and she's gaining her battle fame and that seems to be like her goal like she seems very ambitious in that way whereas the former slave is he's got his own like revenge quest but like joining this war band is going to help him get there elvar is the woman who is climbing the ranks and i think it's varg is the former slave through his eyes we're learning about how these war bands work the internal hierarchy sort of even the culture of this place that really values like battle and there's this etiquette even around winning and losing and stuff like that and which is really interesting and then our third perspective is my fave orca and i just kind of hit a turning point for her so for the first chunk of this book it's really hinted that she lived a life sort of like these other two people previously there's a lot of violence in her background. It's hinted that her husband, Thorkel, was himself a thrall at one point. But now they have their own steading and they're living peacefully. And they they do in, encounter something, like or the aftermath of something violent having occurred, like in the very beginning. But you really only get hints of what Orca is capable of. And again, I just sort of hit a turning point for her and I don't want to spoil anything. So I won't go into too much detail, but you're kind of starting to see what she is capable of. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> She's a very interesting character and I can't wait to see where her journey goes. So yeah, I'm like I said, I'm 40 ish percent of the way through and I'm I'm finally starting to feel like I know these characters and I'm getting my footing in this world like I said they kind of uh, John Gwynn really like drops you into it and you have to pick up a lot of stuff from context clues or you know if you've seen any Viking or Norse related content I'm really liking the character work so far it's really interesting and we're also starting to get a bit a better of a sense of the relationship these people who occupy this land have with like the former gods that also ruled this world or this plane and there they were all these like gigantic creatures like the dragon on the front there was a giant bear a giant wolf a giant eagle and the bones and relics of their bodies still hold power so like the gods were very much real and literal in this world which is interesting and they also have descendants of some sort and they're known as the tainted and these people who are like of these gods bloods ha blood have different abilities depending on which god they are descended from so like the people who are descended of the the bear god berser are berserkers and there there's another character that's like hound or like he's he's got the blood of the the hound god or whatever and he can like sniff out blood and like people and they take on these sort of animalistic features we've seen a couple like wolf ones as well so it's really interesting i'm liking the world building there's definitely a bit of a learning curve with this book which i was expecting it's high fantasy it's a type of fantasy that i'm not really like super familiar with i have read a couple of things inspired by Norse mythology, but like this is really my first foray into it aside from Skyrim. <laughs> so I knew there'd be a lot to learn, but I think if you can push through sort of the slower pacing and kind of handle not knowing what the overall plot is going to be right away, then you'll enjoy this book. It's it's good. And then, like I said, I like the characters. It's just taken a while for me to feel like really heavily invested in like the bigger picture. And even as I'm saying that, I still don't really know. I'm getting like a sense of what it's going to involve, but I don't know what like the actual overall plot is going to be or what's going to connect these three characters. But I'm enjoying the ride. It, it reminds me of early Game of Thrones a little bit and a much more like pared down. Like there's only three point of view points of view versus like however many are in a George R. R. Martin book, at least five typically. So yeah, it feels a little bit more approachable in that way. But yeah, this has been kind of a long check in, but considering that I haven't checked in at all yet, I feel like that was 
inevitable. So to read a bit more tonight, hopefully hit the 50% mark. Normally I blast through books. It's weird when I hit one that like the pacing really just slows it down and it's not that I'm not enjoying it. I am. It's just, it's taking a lot more brain power <laughs> to work my way through, but I am enjoying it. Stay tuned for my next check-in and uh, whatever B-roll I come up with. <laughs> big reading update for you. It's the next day. Am I wearing the same shirt as the last update? Maybe. <laughs> Just want to come in and say Orca is a goddamn monster. Like, and I mean that in the most complimentary way. I'm not saying she's evil, but girl can fight. Holy crap. I just wrote a really intense, it was like a dozen on one fight scene. <laughs> She held her own, to say the least. John Gwynn knows how to write a fight scene. That was, that was entertaining. Why is it that shit always starts hitting the fan right when you have to go to bed? It's like 10.30 and if I don't want to hate myself tomorrow, I have to go to bed, but I'm like 80% of the way through and stuff is happening. <laughs> I was right about some things I had kind of predicted, but like it's happening and unfolding in a really satisfying way. So like, it's really fun to see, but other stuff is just like so intense. Ah! Can't say anything because it would be a spoiler, but um, oh, holy crap. I think I said this before, this book definitely had a bit of a slow start, but it picks up. It picks up. Oh my god. Okay, I just finished Shadow of the Gods and holy crap. That book, like the last third of it, was balls to the wall. Uh, pacing, tension, insanity, just everything. The pacing in the beginning was a little slow. It was a bit of a learning curve for me, like just kind of getting situated into this world. But I really like where John Gwynn went with it and I think he wrote some really exciting fantasy, so I'm pretty much just gonna jump right into Hunger of the Gods now. It's 65 outside, so I'm gonna maybe clean up the portion and read out there for a little bit until the sun goes down and it gets cold, but uh, I'm having a great time. So I just finished chapter one. I really like that John Gwynn included all of like the glossary and sort of cast of characters and like a recap of the last book right in the front. Thankfully I literally just read the first one so I don't think I'll um, need to reference the the recap but it's cool that he did that because I like I wish more fantasy series did that because there's always so much information you forget when like you pick up a book when it first comes out and then the sequel doesn't come out for quite some time so again luckily I was able to go from one to two pretty quickly but this one picks up literally right where the last one ended which I, I quite like sometimes it feels kind of weird when there's been a time jump and you, they have to like recap all this missing time but we're just jumping right back into the action and and uh, I like that so not too far but a good start I am gonna head in now because it's getting chilly as the sun sets as Maine is wont to do, so I'll update you later. Hello. 
Saturday. Had a very busy day. We filmed some videos and I gardened and then we got DQ afterwards because I deserved it. <laughs> And it was very hot today. It's like the hottest day we've had in Maine all year. It was in the 80s. So um, it was nice to get outside and enjoy the sun and the fresh air and stuff though. But I haven't done any reading yet today. I plan to. I did do some reading yesterday. I'm still, I'm only like three or four chapters in. I've definitely gotten at least one chapter from, oh, actually no. I was gonna say we've gotten one chapter from each of our point of view characters, but I saw at the end of the first book that he's adding two more in this one. And so we haven't gotten either of those two characters. And he said who they were going to be. And I was like, because they're characters you do not like in the first one. Their interests are in opposition to our other main three. So I'm, I'm intrigued to see what John Gwynn does with that. Uh, but I was surprised to see that. So I haven't gotten any of those chapters yet, but all the characters are kind of dealing with the aftermath of the climax in the first one still. I'm not quite sure where we're going now. I think that's going to be in the next few chapters, kind of figuring things like plans and stuff out for each of our characters, but I'm excited. I'm really enjoying it. I like the world and I like the story. Um, I just took a nap because I was tired. Um, I painted my nails, but like it's a really sheer, like it, you almost can't tell. And I don't know if I like that. I'm not used to seeing like a difference between the color of like the long, like the end of the nail and like closer to the nail bed. It looks weird. I might repaint those. <laughs> Anyways, this has been very rambly, sorry. But yeah, so I'm gonna read some and uh, I'll update you later. you guys a bit more of a formal update. I got to the 50% ish mark at my lunch break today. I'm on chapter 34 page 302 and oh god this is a chunker especially compared to the first one. Definitely still plodding along. The characters are kind of crossing paths in ways that I wasn't necessarily expecting but I'm liking. I can't say too too much in detail. We have gotten quite a few chapters from the new two POVs and one of the characters I loathed but like you're supposed to hate him so it's kind of fun. I'm curious as to what John Gwynn is planning to do with that character because I have very little sympathy for them. They are entertaining but like they very much remind me of early like the first book or two Theon Greyjoy from A Song of Ice and Fire and just that very haughty unearned arrogance kind of vibe and and something horrible has happened to them so that's kind of funny but yeah I'm enjoying it so far even the characters I don't quite like so much Orca and Varg I think are still my two favorite POVs Elvar the other one from the first book is also in this one and I'm intrigued by her storyline but I'm not as attached to her like as strongly as I am Orca and Varg so <laughs> that's been interesting but I feel like the first book 
the first half was a lot of world building and build up and then the last half was just kind of like this crazy roller coaster as it all sort of came together and I'm kind of expecting something similar with this one. I have seen reviews of like people going crazy at this ending so I'm really looking forward to seeing how it continues. I also got some book mail so I figured I'd show that because I was filming anyways. This is part of my Barnes and Noble pre-order from when they were doing the pre-order sale. It was like 25% off all pre-orders and um, this is a book I've been really excited for so I picked this one up during that sale but that is oh my god there's so much stuff in here <laughs> Emma Straub's This Time Tomorrow look at that cover I love this cover so much this is blurred by Emily Henry so I have all faith that this is gonna be a great book <laughs> and it kind of reminds me of like 13 going on 30 but in reverse I mentioned this in my anticipated reads or anticipated releases video. This character I think on the eve of her 40th birthday is kind of like reflecting on her life and looking back and kind of like hmm, I wonder what I would change and she wakes up on her 16th birthday and um, it kind of gives her a different perspective on some of the events that have happened in her life and I don't know if she's gonna go back and try to change things or if she's just gonna be appreciating the time she has with like loved ones who maybe aren't with her anymore. I know the father-daughter relationship in this book is kind of at the center of things so I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully picking it up soon. I can't, I can't get over how pretty and like springy this cover is and I'm looking at the naked hardcover right now and it's like pastel green and blue. That's like Easter vibes. It also has ES which is Emma Straub's initials. That's kind of cute. But I haven't read an Emma Straub book yet, so I'm really looking forward to this one. I did pick up Modern Lovers I found used recently, so I'm hoping I like this one and that I like that one as well. It seems she like writes characters who are kind of older, but I like that. You know, sometimes I get sick of the um, YA 17 year olds with the fate of the world in her hands kind of plot lines. So sometimes I just want to read about like people drama and like trials and tribulations of being older and uh, being a grown-up <laughs> so yeah really excited for this one and now I'm pretty much just gonna dive right into this I uh I have a lot of reading to do oh boy I want to mention this before I forget but it's shown up in both books now Hunger and Shadow of the Gods but the way that John Gwynn writes almost like horror scenes involving bugs disgusting i he does it well but i hate it and i'm not even like a squeamish person when it comes to bugs but the way he writes it is absolutely terrifying if you have a thing about bugs just be warned before you pick up this book series i don't know what he why i don't know why but he does and it's horrible a big theme in this book is slavery and freedom and several characters are thralls um, which are slaves. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything but it's really frustrating when one of your POV characters is like pretty chill with enslaving people. <laughs> and it's like they don't take joy in it. It's just sort of like this is the way of the world. This is what we have to do. But like there's a couple scenes where like they make or like they cause severe pain to their thralls in order to make them submit to them. And I'm just like, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to like it, but it's just like, it's hard to root for this character. Look at this little bean. This is his favorite thing. He likes to sleep on my arm and like, just curl up. He's so cozy. Hello. It is Friday. I am 83% of the way through Hunger of the Gods. I'm chilling on my couch with my Kindle and my cat. And I'm um, going to try to finish this book. Probably going to finish it tonight. Um, don't really see why I shouldn't be able to. It's 7.30 now. Friday night. I can stay up late. And unfortunately, my boyfriend has tested positive for COVID. I took a test and I'm still testing negative, so um, I guess I'm going to try to isolate from him. I don't know quite how I'm going to do that, but for now I'm just going to sit on the couch and read. The last book ended kind of with a bang, so I'm not sure 
necessarily if I should expect that with this one as well. I have been like plugging along, but it hasn't been like, holy shit yet. So maybe that'll happen. I think I've said this before, but I'm liking the two additional perspectives that John Gwynn added. I think they've rounded out the story in a nice way. One of them is particularly villainous in like kind of a fun way. And the other is like kind of an interesting counterpoint to one of the other main like three POV characters we've had in the past. And I'm very interested to see how that continues to develop. It's very like a morally gray situation. So um, I can't wait to see some of these plot lines collide. John Gwynn's been very good at that so far. I'll update you guys when I finish the book. We're at the end. We're getting there. The finish line is within sight. Why are you trying to play with my tripod? Okay, well, my cat's being a butt. I feel like no matter where I move this, he's gonna try to attack it. Okay, and that's gonna wrap up my vlog for Hunger and Shadow of the Gods, books one and two in the Bloodsworn series. I believe this is a trilogy. I have no idea when the third one's coming out. Hopefully soon though, because these blew my mind. They were so fun to read. I loved all the different perspectives we got. There was not one perspective that bored me. And I think in a multi POV fantasy, that's a really high praise. <laughs> so yeah, I had so much fun with these. I loved the setting, the Norse mythology influence. I liked that it wasn't quite so like directly taking what we know about more Norse mythology. Um, you know, we weren't dealing with straight up with Loki, we were dealing with Rata, who was very obviously inspired by Loki and stuff like that. So I had a lot of fun with that. I loved the larger than life sort of scale of the gods and how they interact with, you know, just regular humans. And that was a lot of fun. Orca could step on me and I'd say thank you. And uh, yeah, I think it's such a fun sort of entry into the high fantasy realm of literature and I cannot wait to see how he finishes the series and I also can't wait to go back into his backlist. I have Malice I think sitting right there so I need to pick that up at some point because I had so much fun with these books and I just I want more and I can't wait to read them. Please let me know down in the comments what you th think of this series if you've read it. I'd love to know. If you haven't read it yet and you're interested I highly encourage you doing so. It was a lot of fun. But yeah, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I did have a lot of fun filming this vlog. It was very prolonged because again, COVID, but I'm glad to finally get this video up for you guys. Feel free to follow my socials down in the description box below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, have a lovely day. Bye.